Before the Nevada atom tests, houses were built at varying distances from the blast center, complete with dummy occupants, to test the effects of an atomic weapon on a typical American town. The village known as Doomtown even included a car park. Fifty cars lined the streets, each containing dummy passengers. And then to positions only two miles from the explosion, troops moved in to take cover in slit trenches. From a 300-foot tower, the atomic weapon was fired. Scientists seven miles away watched through dark glasses as the mighty column of smoke twisted and sprawled across the sky. Then, within an hour, troops moved in through the thick veil of dust towards Doomtown. A mile from the explosion, a house was found to be almost intact, but the occupants would have died. Troops were unable to penetrate the blast center. Geiger counters kept a constant check on radioactivity. Results of this test are still top secret, but the security ban has been lifted on these scenes of an aerial bomb-dropping mission. An American B-50 was used to carry the weapon to the target in Nevada. On this occasion, obsolete aircraft were placed in the dropping area. Remote-controlled cameras recorded what happened to them as the bomb exploded. The monster fireball rose into the air, yet this bomb, it is suggested, was one of the smallest in America's armory. Now we take you aboard the aircraft to drop the weapon as it made its run towards the target. Pilot, navigator and bomb aimer. Only three men carrying the full weight of responsibility of making an accurate drop. The bomb doors opened, the target area was below. Observers adjusted their anti-flash goggles. Research such as this gives further indication of the United States' determination to keep the lead in atomic warfare.